Hello and welcome to all of our gold listening viewers. It's so good to be here today with you. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IBCLC Director of Communications and MC here at Gold Learning and Gold Midwifery. Well, our very special guest here today is Sarah Kainberg, and she is going to be here leading this fantastic presentation coming up. Uh, this is a definitely a not to be missed uh, presentation. We I've had this uh, wonderful sneak peek, uh, so I have uh, I'm very excited about what she's going to be sharing with us here at Gold Midwifery. Now our conference is right around the corner, so I don't want you to miss out on any opportunity whatsoever to come and join Sarah and of course all of our other speakers starting off on February 3rd. You can go to the website right now, check it out at goldmidwifery.com, all the registration and details, time zones and all those types of things. Of course, a free and open keynote uh, uh, is going to be on February 3rd, so you don't want to miss out that with WAPIO as well. So join us for that. So welcome to you, Sarah, for joining me here today. Thank you so much for sitting down and chatting about life where you are. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm delighted. So, Sarah, I uh, first of all, of course, I would love it if you could introduce yourself, um, you know, to the audience, but tell them and tell them where you are in the world, because this is just always so cool, um, you know, that we get to do this together. But uh, we are not in the same country currently. So why don't you tell everyone where you are right now? Sure. So I am based in Scandinavia in a country called Denmark. We are a population of only 5 million people. Uh, we speak the same language. We have similar cultures, a few immigrants, but it's, it's a primarily white people in middle class economy living a quiet life. No war zones, no emergencies, no fires, happily to say that. Uh, so it's a quiet country where midwives work very strongly and independently, and we are the mm. caregivers of women. We only involve medical doctors in birth and pregnancy if there's an indication. So oh, I'm proud to say that I'm a midwife who's delivering babies and care for women throughout pregnancy and childbirth. Yeah, this is always very interesting when we start talking about the different practices around the world. Of course, here we are, and this is the um, the year of the midwife, 2020, and so there's a lot of conversation going on about all the different things that impact midwives around the world. And yes. so, yeah, how many midwives are actually in Denmark? We are currently about 2,000 Danish midwives, and we have... Um... 70,000 births. I think it's currently about 65,000 births per year. Right. And uh, most of the Danish midwives would be going abroad for some time during their career. Most often it would be Norway and Sweden. We have almost similar languages and birthing okay. cultures. So that's where we work. Yeah. And uh, understand each other's languages as well. Yeah, that's, uh, and I mean, how useful is that? Because I can see that. Uh, you know, you, you've worked or you work in hospitals in Denmark, Norway, Sweden and Greenland as well, that you actually go over there as well. Mm. Greenland is uh, uh, has the privilege of some Danish midwives, but uh, finally also great Greenlandic midwives who have been educated either in Denmark or in Iceland or in the US. Mm. Uh, but it has been a large tradition for Danish midwives to go for one or two years to Greenland and experience that kind of nature and culture. And I was privileged right. to go for just uh, eight weeks during a summer holiday, mm -hmm. and I loved it. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, and we were talking just, just now about, uh, you know, what's really happening in your career right now, which has been extensive, but you're doing some mentoring and some leadership, um, which is so important, um, just as you had the opportunity to do it um, when you were younger. But it's... Uh, it's really, it's changed, I think, um, the parameters of how midwifery is happening now because I think travel has become a little bit easier, even internationally as well. And so are, are you seeing more international travel with midwives uh, in Europe as well, Sarah? Mm, I'm actually not quite sure about that. <clears throat> I do travel a lot. And I have a lot of colleagues who do a lot of traveling, but we might be the 5% who are the traveling crazy girls right. always going to conferences and doing that in our holidays and paying for the for attending by our own money. Um, uh, as I graduated 
As I graduated as a midwife 20 years ago, I thought I would be going to Australia working with flying doctors or oh. with bo- doctors without borders to Africa. Oh, yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah, I was uh, fortunate to become pregnant instead and had a daughter and, and my family would love me to stay in the surroundings and yeah. <laughs> not going too much to Africa. Yeah, I did work yeah. in Africa before I graduated as a midwife. Oh, wonderful. And I think we have a a huge responsibility as midwives to bring health and care into the uh, population in the world who need it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, some so very... You could, yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead and finish. No, yeah. just, as, as a midwife working in Denmark, I have found a small niche of perineal care, and I'm very mm-hmm. passionate about that. However, if somebody else had given me a tip about looking into diabetes or looking into uh, health care for immigrants, I could have been just as passionate about that as well. So I think uh, my engagement was by coincidence because one of the medical doctors during my training as a midwifery student, he said, could you please look at this research article? Should we suture the perineal skin or not? Mm. Wow. And that kicked off a 20 years career where I've been doing research and making PhD and a randomized trial comparing acupuncture and local infiltration and also comparing different suturing techniques. So you can say my field is just two centimeters of the female body, but there's still (laughs) quite a lot of things that I have not figured out yet. And I love to go to conferences internationally and speak to other people who are equally passionate about this. And we still have things that we have not figured out. Where yeah. should we connect the fascia to the muscles and how can we prevent women tearing at all? That would be my main goal in my life would be to, be to provide care for women so they are not having repairs. However, we do see that 80% of first time mothers need surgical repair. And when that is the case for now, we will try at all times to improve the care that we do under yeah. these circumstances. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, so I'm I'm going to wind back a bit because I know like your your career is extensive, and now you know here we are specializing in perineal um, care and and repair, as you mentioned. Um, and also, I wanted to mention because this is fantastic. So you were nominated in 2011 um, as Female Entrepreneur of the Year. And so tell me a little bit about um, what happened and what came out of that, Sarah. Well, um, in 2008, I handled in my PhD, and that was an official, uh, we had to deliver three uh, three publications in international journals, and everything was according to standard academically. But I found myself struggling with the fact that midwives and students still needed to have access to education and knowledge about pelvic floor repair. They did not uh, gain from my academic career. So I thought, how can we make uh, an in- how can we make a teaching material that can affect the quality of perineal repair in Danish students and midwives? So that was the first topic that could we make a teaching material in Danish? And uh, I was lucky to get a grant from the Danish Ministry of Research and Health and they granted money for developing this teaching material. So I started a small business in 2008. And in 2011, I had this uh, prize as Female Entrepreneur of the Year, and I was invited. Well, congratulations on that uh, huge achievement, the Female Entrepreneur of the Year. That was just fantastic um, that you were awarded that. And so tell me a little bit about uh, Gain Zone and how people might be able to see it, Sarah. Okay, thank you for that question. Um, Gynzone is an online learning tool for midwifery students, midwives and doctors. We provide online courses about the diagnosis of perineal trauma and also about how to perform evidence-based pelvic floor repairs. Can I rephrase it? Yes, of course. Yeah, so we provide online... Um, We do provide online courses about how to provide evidence-based pelvic floor repair. Fantastic. The, the purpose of Gynzone was to deliver um, nice teaching materials for midwifery mm-hmm. students, actually. That was the purpose of founding Gynzone. Midwifery students told me that they found it difficult to imagine the pelvic floor, which muscles are there and what should be brought together, and how does a repair or a trauma affect women's lives. And that is what we've been trying to bring on as an online tool. 
Yeah, and it, and it is wonderful. And I know we had met uh, several years ago um, with Gainzone at our one of the ICM conferences, which was fantastic. And so we're able to also offer uh, some Gainzone uh, materials as well through uh, our Gold Learning uh, site as well. So it's been wonderful to experience this with you because it's just, uh, it, it is phenomenal. And I know that we're going to get a little snippet of that uh, in your presentation as well. So um, that's what I want to actually ask you a little bit as well is, uh, you know, what are we going to learn for you or what, what can we expect uh, from this presentation um, at our Gold Midwifery uh, Conference? The presentation that I would like to share with the audience is how we as Danish midwives have transformed a, an uncertainty into um, a care that should be provided for all women globally. As midwives, we have taken up the opportunity actually to learn from women what is important after childbirth. So mm -hmm. previously in my career, I've never looked at any of the pelvic floor repairs that I've been responsible for. But in our hospital, we have 5,000 births every year. And now we do check the stitches two to three days after childbirth at the time where we also provide screening of a we do a hearing test and we do a blood sample of the neonatal. At that wow. time point, we actually ask the woman, can we look at the stitches and are you okay? And that has given us a huge insight on the importance of nice pelvic floor repairs. So we are not mm -hmm. traumatizing women with our um, procedures and that we are also telling them that they are healing well. As we did this intervention, we also actually saw that some healing is not always well and some pelvic floor repairs are all not always successful. So what I would like to share with the audience is what do we do if the stitches are in adequately placed in the in the um, in the what I would like to share with the audience is how we check the stitches. You will see examples of stitches that are not placed in the right order. You can see stitches that are close to the closing the urethral opening or you can see infections. So I would like to share different cases and how we treat women so they even after childbirth also have a normal restored pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. Well yeah thank you so much for that Sarah. Um, I know uh, in reviewing your presentation with you it's um, you know very evident that things can happen and they can go wrong and I think these conversations are going to be really important and one of the things that we were just talking about offline is really how do we approach these conversations um, in especially in the immediate postpartum when there's breastfeeding happening and pain or you know whatever is happening emotional uh, suffering and so I, I think this is going to be so good not only to visually see what you're doing so again uh, to let you know uh, Sarah has some incredible incredible pictures to share with us uh, from her clinic and um, they are so important especially if you haven't had an opportunity to really have a look um, and so um, I'm really looking forward to having further conversations uh, with you Sarah in regards to this topic it's it's going to be fantastic I know thank you so much yeah well thank you to you Sarah for joining me here today from uh, Denmark and of course, um, to all your team there as well, who have been supporting you. It's just wonderful to have you be here as part of our Gold Midwifery Conference. And uh, just to wrap things up here, don't forget, uh, you can head over to our website right now, uh, check in and see not only more about Sarah, you can check out her bio and the abstract that we have there. And of course, all of the presentations that are gonna be coming up and the time zones that you're gonna be in uh, come to the live events because they are um, they're really great in informative and interactive. I think you get a chance to really connect with people internationally. And of course, if you can't come to the live, we totally understand. Uh, we will have, of course, recorded that presentation for you and we'll catch up with you, of course, in the forums and on our discussion groups online as well. Well, thank you so much, Sarah Kindberg, for being with us here today. It's been great chatting with you. I'm delighted and I'm, look for, I'm looking forward to sharing women's care with you. In Excellent. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you to all of our listening audience once again for joining us.